everyone to the chosen generation show i am your host emmanuel young i tell you today's show is going to be a power pack show because i have y'all ready for this i have pastor jack redmond gonna be in the building yes he is i have also brian mccoy in the building mr know yourself himself in the building and i have the 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 wonderful the wonderful producer y'all miss emmelyn Stewart in the building. She's going to teach you some things today. I tell you, everybody need to grab a notepad, get yourself together, and get ready for the show. Let's go. Are you ready? Let's go. Welcome back. I tell you, it's going to be an awesome, awesome, awesome show. I have with me, Mr. Brian McCoy. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Oh, my goodness. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Mr. Know Yourself. <laughs> yes. Know AKA Yourself. Mr. Know Yourself. That's yes, right. I love it. I love it. I love everything that you are doing and everything that you're about right Thank now. You. I Thank love you everything. So, much. so you, have, you have Know Yourself. Why do I got to know themselves? Well, I believe that it's there's power in knowing who you are. Um, the fact that God took his time to make us in his image lets us know that we are made of some good stuff. And when you don't know who you are, you have a, a way of now subjecting and allowing yourself to go by based off what others say you should be or how others say or feel that you should be. And that's not what God has made you to be. That's not what he feels about you. So... My, he's put this assignment on me to help others understand the importance and value of knowing who you are because he took the time out to make you in his image so you are made up of some good stuff. So you don't have to settle for other things or what people feel about you, what other people say about you. So, you know, with, with everybody, you know, Mr. Know Yourself, I like that. I like that. You should, you should put that down, Mr. Know Yourself. <laughs> Mr. You Know Yourself. But with all that you're doing, you have your your – everything that you you you're doing so many things right now you know you have you have your radio show your blog talk radio you know you you your videographer you do so much can you please tell everybody who is the real <clears throat> mr <laughs> brian mccoy um well the real mr brian mccoy is a, a young man who's down to earth uh he's very considerate about others feelings He's passionate about our youth. Um, I am someone who's very passionate about getting our youth, our younger generation, to understand the importance of knowing who they are. I've went around. I've, I lived in the projects, so I know what it's like to have low self-esteem. I know what it's like to take on the opinions of others, whether it be the same age as me, older than me, and then you begin to act that out. Um, for a long period of time, I went and I dealt with low self-esteem. I wow. dealt with not having an identity. Mm -hmm. But one day when I had got into something and I felt bad afterwards, like we always do, I asked myself why. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted the real answer. I didn't want a surface answer. I didn't want something that someone was gonna tell me. I wanted to know, why do I feel like this? Why do I keep doing this? Mm -hmm. Why do I, keep acting this way why do I keep saying these things why do I keep allowing these things to happen and when I got the real answer that's when I begin to understand okay that's not me I've allowed what other people have said to me over the years of my life affect what I do what I say how I act so I did then begin to just take some time out and speaking with God and talking with God to show me who I was show me who he made me to be and when I began to see that, when he began to re reveal that to me, I was quite happy yeah. and quite pleased to know that I am made of some good stuff. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And I think I think a lot of young people need to know that, you know, it's a lot of people don't really young people don't really know who they are. No. 
out. And I think they're 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 suffering with a, a huge identity crisis. Definitely. Um, so many people want to be somebody else, and accept uh, uh, accept themselves. Everybody, everybody, everybody. I want to be this person. I want to be that mm-hmm. person. But they really don't want to be themselves exactly. and really really understand who God created them to be. And I think that goes with God. But when we come back, everybody, from a commercial break, I want you to break down a little bit about knowing yourself. You know, why do a lot of young people suffer with that identity crisis of not knowing yourself, especially from your background? But when we come back. Hey, I'm Joel Lester, and I need to talk to you about the Chosen Generation show with Emanuela Young. Oh, come on, you can say it louder than that. One more time. Woo! Say, oh, 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 Listen, you think last season was good? Man, you haven't seen anything yet. Wait until this season. You're in for a treat. Say it like this. Kept your name a secret. I love this show because it's empowering. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love this show because it's empowering, it's entertaining, and it's edifying. This show is relevant to today's youth because it deals with real issues and deals with every aspect of their interests and whatever they might be dealing with in their individual lives. I'm Joel Lester, and I've been called out to stand out. Yes, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. If this conversation is going to get a little deeper, I just I just want to continue going on about knowing yourself a little bit. You know, you talked about your your background and um, you know, growing up that it was you know with low self esteem and stuff. You know, I know for myself, you know, growing up, it was it was very hard for me because I I suffered with very bad low self esteem. I couldn't look at myself from the neck down. I thought I was just uh, you know just horribly ugly. You know, um, I used to walk around, it'd be in like 80 degree weather, and I'm the only one with a big old jacket on, you know, because I just didn't want nobody to see me. I know it sounds crazy, but I, I was in that state of mind, you know, and, I, and I, I, would, I would go home and literally wander off in my mind and imagine myself being somebody else. Wow. My personality, but in somebody else's body, wow. and, you know, because um, it, was, it just was just it was just a, a terrible time in my life and I just was bound by that and I would always ask my friends and my my godmother and like am I pretty am I pretty I don't feel it I don't feel it I don't think nobody likes me and you know I want to be like this person I would be better if I was like this person you know so I didn't really know who my who I was you know I I just I really suffered with identity crisis and it, and it led me down a bad path bad decisions that I made but you know uh, what are your thoughts concerning that? Like, how do you really get to know yourself? How, do, how does a young person right now, you know, know themselves? How? Well, first of all, I want to commend you for from where you came to where you're at now. You're a beautiful young lady. You're doing Thank an awesome you. job. Um, I, too, suffered with low self-esteem, as I said before, and I, an identity crisis. Um, I was one, like many of our young people, we young men today, didn't grow up necessarily with my father. Mm-hmm. And... It caused me to have identity issues. You know, I acted out and did things to be accepted because I was missing something. I was in need of something. And again, nowadays, you have a lot of uh, young people who look up to different people, older people, and they're in need of something, whether it be love, affection, money, whatever it is, they're in need of something. And that's why we as adults have to be careful how we act and the things that we say and do in front of them because I tell young people in schools today, no matter how old you are, someone is always watching you. That's right. Whether it be someone younger than you, someone the same age as you, someone older than you, someone is always watching. So why not be a good example to that person? You never know, you might miss out on your blessing because someone that's watching you saw you say or do something that didn't really rub them the right way and now you've missed out on your blessing. Um, I'd say to the young people today, and knowing who you are, always do good. Whether it feels right, looks right, seems right, always do good. And if you don't know, ask. Asking questions helps help me out a lot. It really did. And when you ask a question, 
get the right answer. Get the real answer. Don't get a service answer. Don't get what you feel you want to hear because a lot of times we want to hear certain things, certain answers, mm -hmm. and we go up for that. And when someone tells us the real truth, we don't like it. Right. Sometimes the truth does hurt. Mm -hmm. But that truth is what now allows you to begin to heal, allow you to begin to understand your purpose, your destiny, understand who God created you to be. Wow. Wow. That, 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 I think that's powerful right there. And just, you know, just to hear it from a male's perspective, you know, to, for you to talk about that, because usually you always hear females, you know, saying, okay, this is, this is how my past was, but you know, to hear, uh, from a male's point of view, listen, this is what happened to me. And, um, because of that, I acted out, I didn't know who I was, you know, myself and, you know, just seeing your whole, just everything that you stand for, you know, with your, your, your blog talk radio with know yourself. It's just like uh, immediately that, that caught my eye. You got to know yourself. And in order to know yourself, you need to know God, That's right. That's you right. know, you need to know God. I just, that's why I tell everybody, I'm like, I, I, I literally myself, I started to know who I was more and more when I got closer to God. That's right. When I started to seek out for answers, because I didn't know. And even when, even when I got saved for real, everybody's just like, well, saved for real. I was born and raised in the church, you know. You know, my mama was an evangelist, she's an evangelist, but I didn't get saved until I was 13. For real, because I was coming to church. Now everybody got the, you know, the iPads mm -hmm. and they got all this technological stuff. I was in church in the back while the pastor was preaching with my Word Up magazine. See. All right, I'm telling my age real quick. <laughs> with my Word Up magazine in the back, socializing. And as soon as the pastor would open his mouth to start preaching, all of a sudden I was sleepy. But, you know, I knew when the sermon was about to be over, when he was winding up. All of a sudden, I woke up. And I was like, "All right, I'm ready to go. I'm hungry. Let's go eat." <laughs> Had a ton of energy then, you know. But I really didn't. I, I, and, and just like, even though I came to Christ, I still didn't know who I was because I wanted to emulate and be like everybody else right. in Christian them now, you know. Because I still didn't know who Emanuela was, you know. It's just like, you know, I just. What practical steps do you think like you could give a a young person to say, you know, what about knowing who they are? Like, what can they do to say, yo, this this is. This is who you are. This is how you get to know who you are. Well, first of all, like you said, to know yourself, you got to know Christ. That's number one. Second of all, choose. That's right. You can clap for that. That's right. <laughs> Second of all, choose a role model that you know about. Don't just choose someone off of face value, what you see in magazines, what you see on television. Read about this person. Find out what this person is really all about before you decide you want to emulate them. You want to be like them. Because everyone that you see in magazines, everyone that you see on TV, isn't exactly what they turn out to, what they really are. Right. So, you know, in, in terms of trying to figure out who you are, it's, it's a process. It's not something that comes overnight. It did not take me overnight to understand who I was. It was a process. But in that process, I read. I asked questions. I researched. You want to emulate somebody? Look them up. Check out their bio. See what they're really all about. Mm -hmm. You long, young ladies, you want to be like the Beyonce's and the Rihanna's and all that stuff like that? Look them up. Read about them. And trust me, there are people in the church that are just like them. Mm -hmm. You understand? You have an example right here in front of you. So, you know, that's, that's what I would say to the young people. You know, don't just go off a of face value. Don't you know, just see the person on TV, read about them in magazines, say, oh, I want to be like them because they got the bling bling, the fancy cars, the big houses, they wear the nice clothes. That's surface. Find out the real deal. Wow. 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 And uh, and with everything, you know, with your your show that you're coming out, you have your show that's out and, and uh, uh, the radio show, the blog talk, where can we, where can everybody listen to you? You can li find me on Facebook as well as, as Twitter at Know Yourself. If you want to listen to my show, it's www.blogtalkradio.com slash Know Yourself Radio. Wow, wow. And I know there's so much more coming up for you. So definitely, much more. Definitely. And I'll tell everybody, please, know yourself. That's right. Okay, don't try to be like everybody else. That's right. I'm going to be me. And, and, I'm and if be I me. can say one thing real quick, I want to say to my this is my show's motto. Know Yourself. And you can have it all. And I believe in that. Awesome. Awesome. Know yourself and you can have it all. I That's like right. that. I like that. I like that. Guess everybody, when we come back, when we come back, we have a phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal person coming up. Y'all ready? It's a female, a producer, 
I'm talking about Miss Emmeline Stewart. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Danielle Lewis, and you are watching Life Zone TV. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. I am so excited right now because I have a producer in the house, y'all. A producer in the house, Miss Emerlyn Stewart, y'all. She's in the building. In the building, in the building. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, my goodness. I'm excited. I'm producer. Producer. It yeah. sounds bigger than it is. <laughs> Listen, you do a lot. You do a lot. You have your own company, and it's just it's fantastic. Everything that you do and all your endeavors and how you link up with so many people, and you, you bring out the best out of people. Can you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Um, I uh, actually, my background is real estate. Wow. And uh, somebody came to me with a uh, short film mm -hmm. and uh, wanted to produce it. And I read it and I thought, wow, this is really funny. Um, but he had no money and no resources, but had this dream and this script that he had been carrying around for about five years. Mm -hmm. um, and I said, you know what? I have some friends at some of the networks and I know a couple of people, so maybe I can do it. Mm -hmm. So I called them up and I said, hey, I want to go ahead and produce this short film. Mm -hmm. They were like, are you crazy yeah. with your own money? <laughs> Um, and uh, so I went ahead and did it, and the film won a bunch of awards, and it did really well. Um, and from that point, it was more about, wow, I could actually take someone's dream mm -hmm. and make it happen. Yes. Because I have access and resources that some of the um, people in this industry don't have. Yes. Um, especially the young people. So that was an amazing opportunity for me to help someone uh, who had had faith and had been just praying that someone would come along and help them and they never lost faith so um, that's really what got me started and ever since then um, I've been dedicated to helping the independent film community uh, to get their projects uh, seen on television and film and uh, we have web series going to cable lots of great things happening oh my goodness that, that's, that's a lot right there it is <laughs> how long how long have you been doing all this four years wow Four years. Wow. But I've had a lot of um, support, and um, I, I always say I have really good roots in Jesus. Yeah. So that really gives me strength, because the entertainment business is not easy. Yes. Um, there are a lot of distractions, mm -hmm. um, a lot of temptations, a lot of issues. And as a woman who's a producer, there aren't that many of us, especially in the independent film world, um, there are a lot of challenges. And if, if I didn't have the relationship that I have with God, I, I wouldn't make it. I wouldn't have made it. I wow. wouldn't be sitting here telling you this story today. Oh my goodness! Mm -hmm. And just and just you being able to stay focused, you know. Uh, were there were there ever some moments that you were looking, you know, even while doing this and and helping so many people that you're like, God, I don't know if I could do this. I don't know if I'm tired. Absolutely. Um, I try not to grow weary in mm -hmm. well doing, but there are many days where I, where I get up and I say, I, I, you know, when I saw I have a short film that was on CBS two weeks ago, and as I sat in my living room, I thought, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. Who did I think that I am that I could do this? Mm -hmm. But I was called to do it. Wow. Um, and so even when it's difficult and when it's painful, um, and there are so many challenges, and I have a family, so there are so many other issues that I have to deal with as a woman as well, yeah. as a mother. Um, I just know. I know that I know that I know that I'm supposed to be doing it. And so all along the way, I, I'm being helped. And when I can't walk, I'm carried by the Lord. So <laughs> Wow. Wow. And you, 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 you're just saying so many things that I... I, I it just is you, 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 whether you know it or not, you're speaking right to me because that mm. just seeing you, that's an encouragement Amen. with all that you're doing. Plus, you're a mother. Plus, you're, 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 you have your own company. You, you have, you, you're seeing the fruits of your labor, yes. but you know, knowing what your calling is. Mm -hmm. You know, because a lot of people, a lot of people, they'll start off and they're like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do this, but they're not faithful to it, and um, they they don't really want to sow into mm -hmm. that dream and sow into the call that Christ has told them to do. You know, and just to see that you said yes and to know because you said yes, God is supplying all of your needs. Amen. That is so true. 
Wow. So true. And I, I also think that it's important for me, and this is a reminder for myself every day, that I'm really serving God. Mm -hmm. I'm not serving Hollywood. I'm not serving the actors and the directors and the investors. I am serving God. And so all that I do, I do it as if I'm doing it towards God, as opposed to, because we get so caught up in the flash and, and, and the red carpets and the events and all the name dropping that goes on in Hollywood, I really have to stay focused on who it is that I serve. Wow. Wow. And, 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 with, and with that, is there ever some times that you know, that you feel like, uh, how, what do you do when distractions do try to emerge, especially being in the entertainment business and you do see, you see a lot that people don't see, mm -hmm. you know, and especially when it comes to your, your walk and your faith, how do you keep yourself just, you know, stable and anchored? How do you do that? You know, somebody was asking me that the other day. One of the things is um, I have a prayer partner who I can call anytime. And so we talk three or four times a week and I'm able to pray. I have a, an email list of prayer warriors because with technology today, yeah. even if I'm in LA, I can still have people in New York praying for me. Um, so I have prayer warriors. I have a prayer partner. I have devotionals that I read every morning just to kind of get me started on the right track. Because mm -hmm. um, if the first thing I open is my emails, my day's off. Wow. It's off because I'm already focusing on all the things of the world and phone calls. And so I try to do my devotional first and then I read everything else afterwards. Wow. <laughs> Gives me a new perspective. You know, and, and just seeing you there, it's like a breath of fresh air to see to see a, a born again believer occupying in high positions is not just in not just in the church building. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of a lot of people think a lot of young people might might feel like, you know, a church is boring. All we do is church. It's nothing. There's nothing like that. You know, I just want to be like this person and that person and this person and stuff like that. But to see physically mm -hmm. someone that is in the entertainment business and that is doing very well and you see the fruit of, uh, of their labor, mm -hmm. you see them well rounded. That right there speaks volumes. You know that, and I, I, I really want to see a lot more young people occupy. This is what my passion is. I want them to see. I want to see them occupy till Christ mm -hmm. come. Yes. You don't have to just be up in the church. Everybody, everybody's not meant to be behind a pulpit. That's right. That's <laughs> absolutely right. And I think that um, there, if there's enough of us Christians that sort of have infiltrated the world, mm -hmm. right, as we were called to do. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's enough of us that we can help bring those young people along because they can look at people like us and say, hey, you know, she's making movies and she's a Christian and she's able to practice the things that she learned in church and, and have a relationship with Christ and still be able to walk a red carpet. I think sometimes wow. young people think it's one or the other. Mm -hmm. Either I go to church every Sunday and go to prayer service service and, and, and read my Bible, mm -hmm. or I'm in Hollywood. I think that there is a place mm -hmm. um, that we are supposed to occupy um, that is supposed to bring other people along. And so even when I select projects, I always have that in mind. What is the message? Who is it going to reach? Mm -hmm. You know, is this something that God would want me to say? Um, and so while I don't do Christian films, most of my projects speak to people in a spiritual way. Wow, I like that. I like that. You know, I, one of my young people and I, we were having a discussion and you know, and uh, we were talking, I said, listen, I happen, you're, you're, yes, you're born again, mm -hmm. but like with what I'm doing, I said, okay, I happen to be this, in this profession mm -hmm. and I'm saved. You know, cause some people say, well, you know what? I just wanna be a Christian director. So all you gonna do is do Christian movies? That's it? Okay, I, I, I'll be honest with you. I'm sorry if I say this. I'm going to step on some toes, but it's all right. It's all right. Not everybody want to just see certain things. Not everybody want to see Peter, you know, walking on water in every movie. Ain't nobody want to always see that. Well, you that's know. why the Bible has more than one chapter, right? You know. More than one book. Yeah. Because stories are told in different areas of our lives. We don't all live in the church. We don't all live at home. We don't all live at work. And so you have to have that diversity. That's right. That's right. So. I'm telling. <laughs> I, I like her. Okay. Yeah. I like her. everybody. I like. I want a movie. I'm gonna give you a movie. All right. When we come back, let's talk. When we come back, <laughs> we got some more. We're gonna hear some more with Miss Emily Stewart. Everybody. <laughs> Hello there, I'm 
Teresa Scanlon, Miss America 2011, and you're watching Life Zone Television. Yes, 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 yes. It's getting good. This conversation's getting good. I'm so proud. I'm, I'm off, off air. We were just talking. I'm like, you really do that? Do all of that. All of that. Oh my god. I said, you should get that S on your chest. Superwoman. <laughs> Superwoman, it feels, it, it, it's again, it's refreshing to see a, a born-again believer doing what Christ said, occupy till I come, letting your light so shine. Sometimes you got to go some places and let it shine there. And Because a, a lot of Christians, I would see that they'll get upset, they'll get frustrated. Look what's on TV, ain't nothing good to watch, ain't nothing good, look at this mess. What, what you doing about it? That's right. We ain't doing nothing but say, being home and playing with your feet. I like that term, playing with your feet. Criticizing. Criticizing, mm -hmm. talking, and ain't doing nothing about it. Mm -hmm. And just to see you up there and just and, and just doing, doing it up and doing it in excellence. Thank you. Awesome. So let me ask you this. How can young people really get involved in in, in, in media? You know, because, you know, we got we got social cam. Everybody see everybody just, you know, trying to be their own little filmmakers. Everybody positioning their phones like, all right, it's right here. <laughs> Welcome, you know, but how can they really do it and move in excellence and say, you know, if you're that frustrated about what you're seeing, mm -hmm. how about you be a part of this? How can they get started in all this? You know, that's that's the big question um, in the industry. It's how do you get started? How do you break in? Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I will say is that social media has made it a lot easier right so people can join Twitter and Facebook and you can look up your favorite actors and you can follow them and look up producers and things like that um, but there is a huge independent filmmaking community in New York City Wow. Um, and so you know that's that's about going to Facebook and just following uh, tonight we're having a monologue slam where actors aspiring actors come out and really do their thing and they win awards um, and then we have celebrity judges who decide, Malik Yoba will be there tonight. Yeah. Um, and this is open to the public. So for our young people who wanna get involved, there is plenty of opportunity. Um, mentorship programs are also great, uh, where we can help the young people sort of come on set and see what's involved, you know, just like you're doing here with your show. Um, but there are lots and lots of opportunities. So I don't want our young people to be discouraged. Um, and for actors, people who want to be actors, um, lots of free classes they can take. Um, just lots of opportunity. Because they need that. You know, I really want mm -hmm. you young people, I pray that you're really paying attention to this. Because some of you really need to get into this. You know, mm -hmm. you, all you do is film yourself anyway. You know, really, you know, you film yourself. So why not film others and just do it in excellence and just start to get you start to cultivate that craft? Absolutely. And now that we have YouTube, um, so you could have your own YouTube channel. We have um, we had a web series that now is going to cable. Mm -hmm. um, so there are lots of opportunities for people to do their own stuff, put it on YouTube and get an audience because really it's all about getting an audience. Mm -hmm. You could start with your church. Yeah. Right, and um, you can have them watch your show and tell other people so that it goes viral, and then you have more and more opportunities. That's awesome. So where can we where can we find you? How can everybody get in contact with you? You know, uh, to to research you. Absolutely. Um, we have a public page yeah. on Facebook, mm -hmm. um, and that's intended so that anybody and everyone can sort of follow us and see what we're doing. Uh, and we put castings there, opportunity for directors, for other producers, uh, makeup artists, everybody in the industry. Uh, and that is uh, Facebook, and it's just Stuart Film Group. Mm -hmm. We also have a website, www.stuartfilmgroup.com, mm -hmm. or people can just look me up, um, Emmalyn Stewart. Awesome. Y'all heard it here. Uh, listen, I thank you so much for being on this You're show. You're welcome. It's, it's a pleasure. I'm so, I'm so proud of you. I'm, I, I look up to you with that. I look, it feels good to see somebody doing, doing their thing for the kingdom. Welcome back, everybody. Yes, I am excited because I have an awesome, awesome guest with me, Pastor Jack Redman. Yes, he's in the building. He's in the building. He's in the building. Thank you so much. That's Jack for coming. 
Thank you for having me. Oh, my goodness. I, I, I'm excited because, you know what, I always see you from afar. I've been at events that you were at, that you were training, you know, you were doing workshops. And it's, you know, to see just the impact that you're doing and how many, not only youth, but even youth leaders, you know, that are so blessed by your ministry and all the wisdom that you have is phenomenal. So just for, to have you here, it just it, I'm really, really excited about that. I'm really, really honored to have you here. So can you tell everybody, because not everybody know who you are. So can you please introduce yourself to everybody? Well, I, I think, first of all, uh, I'm probably more impressive from a distance than up close, so you see me <laughs> doing some things like that. Um, you know, who am I? I'm basically a guy that walked off the street about 15 years ago, had no background in the church, no background uh, in the Bible. I didn't even know what a pastor was. And I came into a church on a Wednesday night, and literally as, I, as worship began, I, I just, tears began to roll down my face. And I had no idea what was going on. Um, and I kept coming back on Wednesday nights for about six or seven weeks. And the first Sunday morning I ever came uh, to Christ Church in Montclair, New Jersey, it was uh, the first altar call I ever heard at 27 years old, and I gave my life to Jesus. And... Um, Basically, at 27, I had been drinking since I was 15, uh, wow. running around, doing everything and anything, totally empty, and I just totally gave my life to Christ, um, gave up alcohol, never had a drink again, mm -hmm. uh, gave up everything and anything that I was doing, uh, and, and from that point on, I just said, I want to share what Christ has done in my life with other people, and I just began uh, setting chairs up, pulling gum out of carpet and things like that, and here I am 15 years later. And, uh, you know, that's my story. Oh, my goodness. But, you know, with, with your story, you're doing so many awesome things. I know you are the president and founder of 4th uh, Gen. Yes. Right. You know, can you just tell everybody a little bit about that? Fourth Generation Ministries, I, I was doing uh, ministry in New Jersey mm -hmm. and doing a lot of youth events all over the place. I mean, we went from doing maybe four or five regional youth events to about 30. A year and we would go from church to church and gather uh, different groups and we just saw God moving uniting churches uniting youth ministries kids getting saved all over the place uh, wherever we went and uh, basically fourth gen came about because uh, it needed to establish a, a 501c3 nonprofit because we were running all over the place we had no money uh, nobody was on staff we had nothing mm -hmm. and we realized that to continue to do what we wanted to do we needed to have some backing and some things like that so we put that together um, in 2007. And basically, fourth gen is about, it's based on 2 Timothy 2.2, where the apostle Paul says to Timothy, take the things I've taught you in front of many people or many witnesses, and then teach them to reliable men who will be able to teach others. Yes. And just as my experience as a Christian, whatever I learned, I wanted to give away. Yes. And whatever I received, I wanted others. You know, I, I had been released of alcohol. I wanted others to get set free. I had been released of lust. I wanted others to get set free. I had been lost. I had been in a dark, dark place. And God pulled me out of the muck and the mire. He put my feet on solid ground. And I said, you know what? I want to share this with as many people as I can. And that's where fourth generation comes from. Mm -hmm. The Apostle Paul was the first generation. Yes. Timothy was the second generation, reliable men was the third, and others was the fourth. And, and I believe Christianity is at its strongest, not when a, a man has a microphone in his hand, mm -hmm. but when people just love each other, uh, get set free, lead others to Christ. And, and the, whatever they've received, whatever they've grown in, they give it to others, and that, that cycle keeps reproducing itself until the ends of the earth. Wow, 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 wow. And, you know, with... With all that you're doing, not only you have, you're the president and founder of Fourth Generation, you have that going. You also are, uh, you're on the radio, personality on the radio. Yeah, and the radio came about, this, it was a total God thing. Mm -hmm. um, I was up in my room praying, and ministry was broke. We had no money. I mean, yeah. it was kind of like, how are we going to eat, you know, <laughs> yeah. type finances. And I'm praying on a Monday, my day off, and I keep hearing about a radio program in my head. And I have, and I had been re uh, you know, speaking out here and there, uh, going to different places, writing some books and things like that. And all of a sudden, I go down to my computer after this radio program was in my head, and the manager in the, uh, of, of Star 99.1 in New Jersey, which is the, you know, radio station of the year, one of the biggest in Christianity. Yes, it is. And he's, he said, we have a 7 a.m. slot open. Mm -hmm. And 
I'm thinking I, I don't have money to do anything. I don't have a budget. I don't. I have nothing. Yeah. And I had a faith crisis, which for me, I don't have faith crises. I'm, a, a, I'm against my belief system. Yeah. So, but I was having one. <laughs> so, so what do you do? You know, you could say I, I don't do this, but now, and I had a million reasons. I remember typing back, and I'm just typing. I'm saying thank you for this. This is such an honor, and thank you for offering. And all these a million ideas are going through my head. You can't do this. You don't have the money. It's crazy. And I just continued to type, and I said, thank you. I'm very honored, and I look forward to talking to you more about this. Send. Wow. And um, here we are, going to start our fourth year this year on Star 99.1 FM. Wow. <laughs> the faith crisis. That's against my belief system. I like that. Oh, it was I'm going to tweet that. It was, it was crazy, but it was real. What do you do? Oh, my goodness. I was, I was getting smacked with reality. Go ahead, go ahead. Everybody, when we come back from this quick commercial break, we're gonna be talking more to Pastor Jack Redmond. If you or your company is interested in sponsoring or advertising on The Chosen Generation Show, please visit www.emmanuelayoung.com. All support is greatly appreciated. And remember, you've been called out to stand out. getting good I, I love what we're talking about so you know with you being on on the radio you know I uh, just just how did that even come about you know getting on there and just you talked about you know I love it I love what you said I love what you said before we went on break you know when I was having a faith crisis well, as against my belief system because I said I'm gonna tweet that I really am but you know how did how did that even go about just just doing that and just trusting God to walk to say you know I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go forth and do this I think part of it um I want to, I always leave myself open to God. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, you know, the word says, you know, I believe, but even help my unbelief. Yes. And God is bigger than our unbelief at times. And I was looking at reality. I didn't, I didn't have the money. I didn't have the funds. It, it was nowhere. I, I didn't have the funds to put gas in the car to get down the street. Never mind uh, to sign a one year radio contract in New York, which is the, they call it the preacher's graveyard. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, and in that, because generally people don't support. And I just had to really uh, ask God, and I went to my board of directors, and we talked to the people at the radio station, and they gave me an, an amazing offer. They had wanted me on the, they wanted me on the radio station, and I went to my board of directors, and we raised, we, we said that we were going to go for it. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I didn't have the, the right uh, mindset of how to make the money, but when I had that my, my faith crisis and when I had my time where I sought God and God said he, he put me on the radio, he gave me a strategy. Wow. And I didn't even know if I could use the strategy, and I had to get approval, you know, <laughs> for my uh, funding and say, can I do this, can I do that? And, and uh, the sponsorships came through that we needed to get through to have the radio program. And in that, it was um, just trusting God because it's not about me. Amen. It's not about me. If God wants me there, he'll put me there and he'll keep me there. And at times I won't know what that looks like. At times it feels, it doesn't feel good, you know, but God has a message that he wants to go forth. And whether it's on the radio, uh, and I, I've never, I didn't aspire to be on the radio. I mean, I, I go to the, I go, I told God years ago, I'll go anywhere, anytime for nothing. And I told him that. And, and he's taken me up on that offer quite a few times. And, uh, you know, so we, God just opens up the doors and we need to walk through them. Amen. Amen. You know, you, you're doing a lot. And because you are on the radio, I believe so many lives have been just impacted by that. You know, just by that simple, yes, God, you know, obedience, obedience. You have that. And you know, now you have, you have a book that's out right now. God Belongs in My City, and you, you co-wrote that book with uh, Pastor Daniel Sanabria. Yes, this is my fourth book, yes. and uh, Pastor Daniel Sanabria is just a great friend, a great man of God, and uh, back in 2009, there was an atheist campaign mm -hmm. where atheists spent $25,000 uh, promoting their belief in nothing. Oh, yeah. And uh, they were sitting in their office and talking about it and figuring out what do we do with this, how do we address this, and someone said, let's pray. 
and they had 12 days. It was November 2nd, and they said, let's do a prayer walk on November 14th because it's getting cold and we don't want to be too far. And they said, well, maybe we can get 100 or 200 kids. And they, they said, let's make, get some T-shirts and let's, let's get this and let's get ready to do this. And in 12 days, 1,500 teens showed up. And it was never meant to be anything more than a one-day prayer rally, and it just began to explode. It went viral. And teens all over the place said, we want to pray. We want to pray in our city. And in three years, it's gone to 50 different cities, four different countries on different continents. Wow. And I was with, yep, go ahead, go ahead, right? Yeah. And just really, um, I've been friends with Past Pastor Daniel for years. Uh, speak at his church, you know, Park Slope Christian Tabernacle in Brooklyn. Yes. And it just, you know, it was never meant to be anything huge or big or it just kind of happened. Mm -hmm. And I was with uh, Danny and, and I said, Danny, let's write a book about this. And I had uh, on my heart to write a book about prayer. He had the movement and I said, let's, let's do this. Yeah. And it's basically anybody can pick the book up if they never go on a God Belongs in My City uh, march and they'll learn how to be a better prayer warrior. They'll learn how to pray in their communities. They'll be able to see things that they just know are out of God's will, begin to pray God's will into those situations. Amen. And then many of those people, they're going to come along. They're going to uh, be in a God Belongs in My City march. So it doesn't matter. We, you know, it's, it's, it's a training manual for someone who wants to do the march. But anybody who picked it up, who just said, you know what, I want to learn more about prayer, either one, that book's for them. Wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. And where can everybody get purchased the books? Uh, the best place to go, uh, my website or the ministry's website is fourthgen.org. It's the number four, T-H-G-E-N.org. And you can get any of the, the four books which I've written. Mm -hmm. Also, the God Belongs in My City uh, website is www.godbelongsinmycity.com. And they can get the t-shirts there, the books, they can get everything there also. Wow. And how long did it take you to write this? Because, you know, a lot of times people say, you know what, it took me a few, it took me a year or just a few days or a few weeks. You know, how long was, how, what was the birthing process like with this, with, with this book? Um, the birthing process was basically, you know, the, the baseline was the book on prayer, prayer principles. From there, you know, I, I spoke and worked with Pastor Danny about what, what do we want to capture? What did, what, how did the youth come about in it? What did they feel? What, and we got all kinds of excerpts from the kids and comments, what they felt, what they experienced, how prayer became real in their life. And then we, we, we wove the two together to show how the principles of, of the Bible and the principles of prayer that were written thousands of years ago work today. Amen. So we took the principles that Jesus spoke about, the apostles spoke about, and then we took a 15-year-old kid, yeah. and the 15-year-old kid said, well, this is what the Bible said, and I did what the Bible said, and here's what happened. Yes. And we talk about situations uh, in their schools, in their classrooms, on their streets, in their city. And as, as I said before, now this has gone across the nation. It's gone across uh, to Liberia, to uh, Scandinavia. It's, it's going all, like every time, I can't even keep up with it. Yeah. Every time I go on the website, there's three or four new places. And it's amazing because Pastor Danny is just a tremendous, tremendous leader and who really networks so good with other cities. And it's always a grassroots movement. It's not something like he's overseeing and, and, and got everything. He finds leaders in the cities and the mm -hmm. leaders take charge of it. And they, they join all the different youth ministries together. And the teens, basically, they're the ones that step up. They're the ones that pray. They're the ones that march. Because we believe that if we're going to change our nation, it has to start with the youth. Amen. 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 I believe that. I believe that. And you know what? With the God Belongs in My City, I know my young people at my church were involved in that with uh, uh, the prayer walk. And we adopted the school across the street from the church. And they began moving. moving and it, it, it just made me go into tears to see them really earnestly praying yes, for their and, generation. And what's happened um, with God Belongs in My City and many of the other youth movements in the past five years or so, there's really been a spirit of unity that God has been pouring out. Teenagers don't want to be isolated. They want to work together. You know, they want to pray together. And when they start joining each other, not only in their local ministry, but the ch churches start joining together, the power of God comes. Amen. And when the power of God comes, go ahead. That's right. One of the concepts I call is beyond convinced. Mm -hmm. And I've had teenagers that were bulimic that come to the altar. We pray for them. They never throw up again. Wow. We have kids that used to be corner boys. They come to a Friday night just to mackle on the girls. 
and we pray for them and they get hit with the Holy Spirit and they leave the corner. We've had kids that have been getting trained by the gangs to be leaders, you know, and we pray for them and we love them and we see them and they walk away from the gangs and you know you can't do that. But God makes a way. Amen. I tell you everybody, it is everything that everything that you heard today from the top to bottom from knowing yourself to to knowing how to get into film to to being active to occupy until christ come to be a prayer warrior to be young and pray for your own city it's just it's just i i, I just love this whole show everybody that is impact it's all about impacting a generation and seeing the ripple effects this is what i this is this is beautiful and i tell you this show pastor i thank you so much for being on this show everybody please here here's the book everybody here is the book see this book everybody needs to get this get this book learn it get it put it in is it on kindle it's not on kindle yet but we've got it we've, we're coming. working on it it's coming get it because i want to read it i want to get it for my ipad but get it but don't forget until next time everybody touch your, touch your neighbor touch your neighbor find somebody you're chosen You've been called out to stand out.